Okay, so we all know Lawrence Dismukes Miller. We all know and love Lawrence Miller. So where did the middle name Dismukes come from? So um, it's kind of an odd name. Um, it came from the Dismukes line that you all share, um, the Millers, the Lassiters, all share this Dismukes line. Um, there's a George Dismukes, an Alicia Dismukes, a Paul Dismukes who fought in the American Re Revolution. So where did this name come from, Dismukes? So actually it's a French Huguenot name. Um, it was originally Desmieux, which is much prettier than Dismukes. Um, you have another, well, let me go into real quick what the French Huguenots were because um, you, have a, you have a couple of ancestors, maybe even three um, or more lines um, that were French Huguenots. So what's a French Huguenot? Um, if I'm gonna say it correctly, it would be Huguenot, but what's a French Huguenot? So after the Protestant Reformation in France, um, you had these Huguenots. Now the Huguenots were French Protestants um, reformed, um, more Calvinist, um, and they would fight civil wars in the late 16th centuries in France, in the late 16th century over religion. The Huguenots on one side, the Catholics on the other, and um, there were wars. They were called the wars of religion or something like that in France. And at the end of it, at the end of this warring period, they had the Edict of Nantes. Now, the Edict of Nantes basically said that uh, Huguenots could practice their own religion and had autonomy um, in their faith in France. And so, okay, great, all well and good. But um, those rights that were set up in the Edict of Nantes uh, would kind of be infringed upon over the following decades. Um, and there would be a lot of civil unrest um, for religious reasons during that time. And so finally, let's see, in 1685, or around 1685, Louis XIV would reverse the Edict of Nantes and basically say, if you're going to be in France, you have to be Catholic. All Protestants either convert or get out. And um, so you had, you had millions. Um, I think there were close to two million, maybe more, uh, Huguenots in um, France at the time. So, most of them, I would say, did not convert over to Catholicism. They either went underground. It was a very difficult time because um, you could not, it was very dangerous to stay in France at the time. So you had this, what was called the Huguenot diaspora, and they just started spreading all over to either Protestant countries or Protestant-friendly countries. Um, so most of the Huguenots went to, you know, England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Denmark, Sweden, Switzerland, um, places that were friendly to, um, to Protestants. So you have a lot of Huguenots that ended up in England and Scotland and then eventually would come over to America. And so that's how you end up with people that even though they came from England and they immigrated from England, they'll, they'll still have French names because they're probably Huguenots. So, um, for example, George Bunker. <laughs> so George Bunker, you think, what kind of a name is Bunker? That's, you know, you think Archie Bunker, right? Well, George Bunker immigrated from England in 1634, and he owned a piece of land that was known as Bunker Hill, which would later, 100 years after he, he basically bought the land, um, over 100 years after he bought the land and long after he was dead, um, in the American Revolution, they would fight a big battle at Bunker Hill. Um, but George Bunker, what was the name Bunker? Well, actually, it used to be Bonque. So it went from this beautiful French Huguenot Bonque to a hardened off, you know, um, Americanized, Anglicized Bunker. So whenever you have these names that kind of sound a little strange, Dismukes, Bunker, um, you know, try and, try and put them in sort of a French version of it, and then you realize, okay, they're, they're Huguenots. 